and the next one uh, the two main things we will consider uh, in this memory organization are the random access memory and the read only memory uh, can you tell me uh, some points about the ram so what type of memory is it random access memory it's a temporary memory sir temporary memory okay yes sir and rom it's a permanent memory sir permanent memory you know any hmm. types in the ram yes sir based on the size 2gb 3gb hmm. any other types of ram yeah. static ram and dynamic ram ah static ram dynamic ram yes and do you have any other types in rom eep rom p programmable rom electronic programmable rom erasable electronic programmable rom ah nice so these are the different types based on our convenience we are going to uh, make use of this ram and rom so if you want to <coughs> store the data temporarily that means when you are going to execute any program all the data will be kept in the ram and once it is done the final data will be stored in the rom memory okay it is just like uh, opening one application in the mobile phone and that uh, will be run in the ram memory okay and if you want to go in like if you want to do any modifications like taking pictures okay and performing recording uh, everything will be stored in the rom why because we need to access it in the future isn't it so the permanent memory will go with the rom and the temporary memory it will comes under the ram it is just like once you are playing one game and suddenly you uh, switch off your mobile phone so will the game continue from the same place uh do you understand will the game continues from the same place no sir you're playing sir, game not. and suddenly you switch off your mobile phone it will not continue why because it is stored in the volatile memory temporary storage that means that will be in the ram part okay and the rom so whatever the images audio video you have that will be permanently stored in the uh, read only memory fine so uh, this topic together you will get it for the five marks okay so what is the ram and rom and what is the behavior of the ram and what are the different types of ram so static ram and the dynamic ram you have so those are the two types and the next one is a uh, programmable ram and electronical electronically programmable ram and electronically the erasable programmable ram like eep rom uh, eep rom and the rom okay so these are the different types we have i think i am fast right are you able to follow me yes sir yes okay so these are the some of the times you uh, types you will get for the two marks what are the different types of ram and what is the usage of the ram and what is the rom okay and what is the difference between ram and rom okay and different types of the rom chips fine so when we are making use of this ram so we'll explain the ram and rom chips with the uh, circuit diagram so the question is uh, briefly explain ram and rom with the circuit diagram so i'll explain you simply one here we are making use of 128 you know this numbers 128 by 8 and 512 by 8 you have any idea yes sir no you have any idea about this one why we are making use of 128 and why we are making use of 512 you know sizes uh, what is the starting size of the ram at least uh, no, like no sir no sir no uh, like you told na 2 gb 3 4 gb 6 gb like that starting size 500 mb uh one more type you have here 128 so 128 so 128 bits and 512 so here we are <laughs> making use of this ram chip by 8 so this will represent so that many ram chips we are having on the processor by 8 means that many we have 8 we have so each of size 128 okay each of size 128 and then eight we are having on the processor and here down also 
five to twelve, okay, is a size, and eight we have on the a uh, processor by eight, okay, and each and everything will have eight bit data bus up and down, and it is a bi directional data bus for RAM, and uni directional data bus for the ROM. Why uni uni directional? It will store no permanently. It will store the data permanently, and if you want to erase, also you can erase. But we will make use of some procedure to erase the data. Okay, so so stores permanently, and here we can store and we can retrieve the data at the same time. Fine. So it is a bi-directional RAM chip, and down you have the unidirectional for the ROM chip. And the typical signals which we are using under RAM are two chip selects and read and write operation you can perform. Okay, and one. AD seven, so seven bit address. Okay, it is ranging. Uh, memory map. We can understand this concept. We have one concept called the memory map. Totally, we have ten lines. Okay, in that seven, we will not use. Okay, so that seventh bit will be the seven bit address you will have. So, if you have any queries, you can ask me, or if you want me explain the slow, like I will explain the slow also. So till now, did you follow? Yes, sir. So okay till now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So we have. Sir means one twenty eight bit size RAMs are uh, means there are eight one twenty eight bit RAMs sir in processor. Ah, uh, there eight chips you will have. Okay, on the processor, and next five to twelve eight chips on on that you will have. For example, if I say one twenty one twenty eight by four, then what is the meaning? One twenty-eight by four. By four. Four chips you will be having. Ah, five twelve by four. Yes, four okay. chips of five twelve size. So, ah uh, yes, same thing we'll have. Right? Ah, uh, it is not uh, like eight bit data bus we are using. Eight bit data bus we are using. Suppose if I say five, ah, one twenty-eight into sixteen. Then sixteen yes, you RAMs you are play. Ah, uh, we are placing onto the processor. That is the meaning. Yes. Sir. Okay. So here we have the typical signals. So chip select two and the read and write we can perform uh, for the RAM like I am explaining. And one uh, seven bit address lines we have. These all are used for performing some memory related operations like memory read or memory write or memory inhibit. So what is this inhibit? Uh, you know any general meaning for inhibit? Uh, like uh, dictionary meaning, general dictionary meaning for inhibit. Inhibition we will tell. Adjusting to the surroundings. What what adjusting? Adjusting to the environment. Ah, uh, yeah, like that only. Uh, so here uh, the adjusting to the environment means we can perform read and write at any time. So that's the meaning. We can perform either read and write at uh, any time. So adjusting to environment or. Uh, the user wants to store the data or user wants to retrieve the data so when he is performing or when he is executing any program he can make use of that so if the chip select is both activated to zero then the function is inhibit we are calling and the state of the bus is high impedance high impedance means always active okay tri state buffer you will have input output and the high impedance state you know tri state buffer input means we can place and output means we can retrieve the data and high impedance means we don't know when we are going to place the data and when we are going to retrieve the data did you notice anything in this uh, table did you yes, notice sir, anything sir. in this table memory function and state of data bus just you see one logic is there in that table any answers see carefully memory function and state of data bus what is there in that one unique thing is there sir if it inhibits uh, uh, state of bus is high impedance uh, whenever you have the inhibit memory function we have the state of data bus in high impedance that means whenever the high impedance state is there the processor is informing us 
whether you can perform read or write operation but exclusively when it is want to perform read and write operation okay the state is going to change with respect to, to read and write operations uh, am i clear whenever, yes sir uh, whenever the processor wants to perform read and write operation you just uh, follow the read and write signals 0 1 and 1 0 okay so we are going to store the input data to ram and we are going to take take the output data from the ram when it is 0 1 and the 1 uh, don't care okay so in that case yeah and remaining all states the memory uh, chip or memory will be in the high uh, inhibit mode and the state of bus is always active so that is the mean are you clear yes sir so here <clears throat> you need to explain the chip so what chip like we are going to use here okay this ram chip and what is the significance of 120 18 to 8 and how much data bus we are going to use okay and what are the typical signals we are we are having for the ram chip okay and the next one is a room read only memory and we we cannot uh, have the next signals like uh, only 9 9 bit address line we have and the chip select uh, we have that to two chip select signals we have okay and it will be always in the inhibit mode that memory function and state of the data bus is always high impedance so whenever we want to store the data in the middle of the program we can store the data so that that's about the ram and uh, rom chip so this is like brief uh, explanation about the ram and rom so the possible questions from this concept are what are the different types of ram and rom what is the difference between ram and rom okay <clears throat> and briefly explain the uh, circuit diagram of the ram and rom chip so is it clear or you yes, can sir. ask me queries if you have any queries uh, like you can ask me queries so here i have same thing the block diagram of the are you able to see yes sir yes sir yeah main memory is a heading isn't it yes sir yeah. so here uh, like i have same chip select and the read write and the same state okay and same thing the rom also by directional uh, data bus we have and the two chip select signals and the one uh, ninth bit address when i am explaining the memory address map like you will get to know the things so so far are you clear with the two concepts memory hierarchy and this ram and rom chip yes sir so this one is like simple only if you know the circuit diagram this uh, block diagram then you can draw and explain on uh, on your own so whatever the thing you have understood you can explain that for this ram and rom <clears throat> so the next one is i told you memory address map okay so the first thing whenever we want to uh, design any computer system or like whenever you want to access any memory okay so in that case we should no clearly about the ram and rom how many ram chips are available and how many rom chips are available and what is the size of ram and rom memory are you following yes sir yes sir uh, why because uh, if i know clearly then only i can store the data it is like uh, you people will make use of pen drives right okay so for uh, for carrying the data and all i want to store the uh, 8 gb uh, like movie and now i have the now i have the 2 4 gb pen drive okay so two files i have and 2 4 gb pen drives i have it is clear like you can uh, store 4 uh, gb movie in one pen drive and another pen drive so if you know the size of the pen drive only you can do it isn't it or else if you keep 4 gb pen drive and you are trying to Uh, load the 8 gb film into that will it accept no 
obviously it will not accept isn't it so whenever like you are going to deal with any application any particular application first of all we need to know the size of the ram and rom okay so it is there the first one so particular application and data you need to either ram or rom and the next one so the interconnection between the memory and the processor simply we are calling it as a memory address map <coughs> okay the interconnection between the memory and the processor is an established from the basic knowledge which we have acquired from the ram and rom chips okay so i am calling it as a memory address map why because it is used for representing the memory and the processor links okay it is basically used for representing the memory and the processor links so simply down you can see one case study required is 512 m bytes rom and the 512 bytes ram minimum requirement and available is as per my block diagram what is the size of ram 128 hmm and the available is the like rom 512 512 so as per my block diagram i have 512 uh, bytes rom and 128 bytes ram isn't it and the required is this one 512 so we can make use of it we can increase the number of chips in the ram isn't it so if you try to increase the number of ram chips uh, then you can increase the size in the required like it may be 128 into 4 okay again we need to add more four extra so then it will clearly increase the size of the ram okay that we need to know so the main use of the memory address map is to try to identify the available ram and rom sizes okay then based on that we can establish the connection between the memory so it is basically used for identifying all the slots available in the memory when we are going to access it okay all the slots are available in the memory when we are going to access it fine so here we have one simple table so that table is used for indicating the ram so as i told you four we are going to increase so ram 1 ram 2 ram 3 ram 4 and how many roms we have only one rom chip we have okay because a computer will have one hard disk and a multiple number of ram <coughs> isn't it so one rom chip and multiple uh, ram chips we will have so are you able to see this uh, table Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 7 bit address as i told you 1 to 7 don't care so we are not making use of any 7 bit and after that we are making use of 8 9 10 okay based on that we are going to select the different bank first ram one will be available in between 000 to 007 this is a memory address map ranging from 000 to 03ff okay so this is a simple one i think you can understand so if you have 8910000 then it is ram 1 and then followed by 1 and the 2 and then 3 so then four rams we can select and the rom chip is straight away 10th address bus if it will be activated then we can get the rom which is ranging from 200 to uh, 3f okay so what did you understand uh, based on this memory address map Do you understand anything? <clears throat> Why we will use this memory address map? Hmm? Yes, sir. To gain to calculate the memory required for a certain application. Ah, uh, to calculate a certain application, how much memory is available, and if you want to increase how many RAM chips and how many ROM chips we can increase. Okay, and what is the memory address map? So it is used for Uh, conveying the typical uh, connection between the processor and the memory this one between the memory and the processor okay and so one case study is there that is the required and the available and this is one of the typical table which is used for selecting the ram and the rom chip are you clear yes sir yes sir <coughs> so these are the some of the Uh, like three topics okay so i think i am like running out of time as well 
So far, you have any queries? 